In today's video, we're hitting those subclasses from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything for the Sorcerer, the Warlock, and the Wizard. They've got some great new abilities in these subclasses. Let's check it out. If you're into tips, tricks, reviews, and unboxings of all things Dungeons and Dragons, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you won't miss any of our epic upcoming videos. Now let's check out the new subclasses for the three big magic users. First up is Sorcerers. Now in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, Sorcerers actually get 11 new spells available to them. There's also two new meta magic options. You might remember from the player's handbook that sorcerers have a pool of sorcery points to spend. Well, in Tasha's, they've added some new options for spending those points. They are make a roll to attack with a spell and miss and spend two sorcery points to re-roll that d20 and see if you hit. Also, when you cast a spell that does either acid cold, fire, lightning, poison, or thunder damage, you can spend a sorcery point to change the damage type to another one on that list. And lastly, if you fail an ability check, you can spend a sorcery point to reroll for that too. Okay, let's get into the new sorcerer origins that are available. First one is the Aberrant Mind. Now these are sorcerers that touch others' minds and alter the world around them to control the magical energy of the multiverse. Here are some of the abilities that you get with this subclass. As a bonus action, you can choose a creature within 30 feet that you can speak to telepathically. If you cast a spell from the sorcerer's expanded spell list, you can actually use sorcery points to equal the spell level instead of using a spell slot. Level up your sorcerer even more and you get the option to use resistance to psychic damage and advantage on saves against being charmed or frightened. Arborant Mind Sorcerers also get the ability to use a bonus action to spend sorcery points to take some more benefits from this list one point for each benefit you want to take. You can see invisible creatures within 60 feet, get a flying speed equal to your walking speed, get a swimming speed equal to two times your walking speed and breathe underwater, or move through space as narrow as an inch. Lastly, once your level is way up there, you can choose as an action to teleport up to 120 feet and creatures that were in 30 feet of the space that you left take force damage on a failed strength save. I think the new Aberrant Mine Origin sounds pretty cool. What do you guys think? Moving on to the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer. This one almost sounds kind of steampunky to me. Think Aberron. For this type of sorcerer, their power arises from a plane of existence shaped by clockwork efficiency. Now this means their power can actually manifest in a few different ways and it gives some examples and I think these make amazing role-playing opportunities. Check this out. You can have spectral cog wheels hover behind you. You could have hands of a clock spin in your eyes. Or you can even have floating equations and geometry overlay your body. I don't know about you, but I think those all sound fantastic. Let's hit up some more of the advantages of the Clockwork Soul. When someone within 60 feet of you is about to roll a d20 with advantage or disadvantage, you can prevent the advantage or the disadvantage with your reaction. Level up your Clockwork Soul Sorcerer and you can start to do things like use an action to spend one to five sorcery points to create a magical ward around you or a creature within 30 feet. Now how much damage the ward takes depends on how many of those sorcery points you use. Here's one of my favorites. At higher levels, the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer gets this ability. Use a bonus action to spend one minute aligned in consciousness to endless calculations. And what you get is attack rolls against you can't have advantage and 
for a tax saves or checks that you make, if you roll a nine or less, it will count as a 10. Lastly, fully level up this sorcerer and you get the ability to use an action to summon the spirits of order around you in a 30 foot cube. And here's what it can do. The spirits can restore up to 100 hit points divided up as you choose for creatures inside the cube. Or you can choose to have damaged objects inside the cube instantly repaired. Lastly, you can choose to make six level or lower spells that are affecting creatures in the cube just end. I really like the idea of the Clockwork Sorcerer. It's probably because I'm a huge fan of steampunk type things, so I'm getting all these visions of role playing with cogs and clockwork and gears and things like that. What do you think about this one? Let me know in the comments below. Adventurers, if you're enjoying this video, can you do me a favor? Hit that thumbs up button, give us a like, it helps out the channel more than you know. If you missed part one of this series, that video is going to be available right up here. Or if you still need to watch part two in the series, you can find that one right up here. Warlocks are up next. In Tasha's Warlocks get 15 new spells available to them. Now the player's handbook offers Warlocks different packed boon options. Well, there's one new packed boon option available in Tasha's and it is called Pact of the Talisman. What this does is you have an amulet that you wear and when you fail an ability check, you can actually add a D4 to that roll and see if you succeed instead. Now Tasha's Cauldron of Everything also adds eight new invocations for Warlocks. Your Warlock subclasses are represented by choosing an otherworldly patron. Well, there are two new patrons available for Warlocks to choose from in Tasha's. The first is called the Fathomless. Now, this is a patron that allows you to draw on the power of the elemental plane of water. Examples of this patron could be Krakens, Water Elementals, Merfolk Demigods, or even Sea Hag Covens. With the Fathomless option, you get the chance to use a bonus action to summon a spectral tentacle <laughs> for a minute, and it does cold damage when it attacks. This patron also gives you a 40-foot swimming speed and the ability to breathe underwater. You also get resistance to cold damage, and if you're submerged in water, you can understand other creatures that are also submerged in water and they can understand you. As you level up, you get options like helping out your allies by reducing the damage they take with your reaction if your spectral tentacle happens to be within 10 feet of them. Level up some more and you get the opportunity to learn and cast Evard's Black Tentacles without using a spell slot and let you gain temporary HP. Lastly, get this character all the way to the high levels and you get the option to teleport yourself and up to five others that are within 30 feet of you up to a mile away into a body of water that you've seen as long as it's a pond or larger. That's pretty darn cool. I don't know about you, but I can see this fathomless option and one of these patrons being perfect for something like salt marsh. The other new warlock subclass is the genie. Now you can choose either a earth, air, fire, or water genie. And just like it sounds, you get granted a tiny object as a magical vessel to use as your spell casting focus. There are six different vessels to choose from, or you can roll on the table that's in Tasha's and yes, there's an oil lamp. Some of the things you can do with this vessel is you can vanish and enter the vessel once per long rest. The interior is actually 20 feet around and 20 feet high. You can use a bonus action to exit the vessel and any objects you've stored inside will be kept there safely. As your genie warlock levels up, you get to start doing extra damage on attacks equal to your proficiency bonus. 
You also get resistance to a certain type of damage as determined by your patron. Level up your genie some more, and as a bonus action, you get 30 feet of flying speed and you can hover for 10 minutes. This gets even better. As your genie levels up even more, you can take up to five creatures into the vessel with you, and only 10 minutes in the vessel will count as a short rest instead of an hour. The best of the best as a genie get to that top level and as an action you can request from your patron a small wish of the effect of a spell level six or lower that cost an action to cast from any classes spell list. I think that sounds pretty cool for a 14th level genie. Okay on to the wizard. In Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the wizard gets 19 new spells to choose from. They also get two new arcane traditions. Player's Handbook, right, has all the different schools. School of Abjuration, School of Conjuration. Well, the new ones introduced in Tasha's are not called schools, but we have, first off, Blade Singing. This sounds really neat. you got to listen to this one. So blade singing wizards actually incorporate sword play and dance. So normally your wizard, right, being a little squishy, low armor class, not really a melee class, kind of stays back. But now you've got a blade singing wizard. They're doing stuff with magical swords. They're actually getting in on the melee action. Check this out. They actually create intricate and elegant maneuvers and channel magic into their blade. I'm almost thinking like a Cirque du Soleil going on here or something. Blade singing wizards are proficient in light armor and one type of one-handed melee weapon. They also get proficiency in the performance skill. Now here's some blade singing options. As a bonus action, for one minute you can start your blade song. This allows you to get a bonus to your AC that's equal to your intelligence modifier, add 10 to your walking speed, you get advantage on acrobatics checks, and you get to add your intelligence modifier as a bonus to your constitution saves to help maintain concentration on spells. As a blade singer levels up, they get the opportunity to attack two times and you can replace one of those attacks with a cantrip. Level up some more and you can use a reaction to reduce damage by spending spell slots. Continue to level up and you can add your intelligence modifier to your melee damage. The other subclass for wizards is the Order of Scribes. I'm really liking this one. Let me know what you think. Now, the Order of Scribes is the most bookish of all the wizards. We already know that wizards love their books because they have to study to learn their spells and they keep a spell book and they're just a lover of books in general. But the Order of Scribes actually gets to magically awaken their spell book, turning it into a trusted companion as a sentient creature. Check this out. First off, Order of Scribes wizards get to use a bonus action to magically create a tiny little quill. This quill has a couple functions. First off, it doesn't require any ink to write. Secondly, if you use it to copy a spell into your spell book, it only takes two minutes instead of two hours. Now, as you start to level up, you get the ability to awaken the sentient being inside your spell book. And this is going to grant you all sorts of different abilities. First off, you can swap damage types with another spell of the same level. You can cast ritual spells with the normal casting time instead of the ritual time. And you can use a bonus action to manifest a tiny spectral object hovering within 60 feet. Now this little object it, they said it can usually like look like a book or some text or even a great scholar from the past, but that it sheds light in a 10 foot radius. It can see and hear and has dark vision within 60 feet and it can telepathically share what it sees and hears with you without requiring an action. You can actually cast spells 
from this object's space and use an action to move it up to 30 feet. Also, this object can be up to 300 feet away from you. As the Order of Scribes wizard levels up, here's some more great features. After a long rest, you can use your little quill to create a magical scroll with a spell from your book of first or second level. When you read the scroll to cast it as an action, it actually cast it at one level higher than normal. And any scrolls you create with your quill only take half the time and half the gold to create. As you continue to level up while your spell book is on you, you get advantage on all arcana checks. And for Order of the Scribe, this is one of the most interesting things that I read. This sounds really exciting to me. If you have your spell book manifested into that tiny object and you start to take some damage, you can use your reaction by having the object absorb the damage, but it's going to temporarily sacrifice spells out of your spell book. Now they will come back after 1d6 long rests. So you might be waiting up to a week to get some of those spells back, but it's gonna absorb all the damage for you and you know how squishy you wizards can be. Thanks for joining me and going over all the new subclasses that are in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. I don't know about you, but I am very excited to try playing some of these. Epic question of the day, which one are you most excited about in today's video? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And until then, go have an epic adventure.